Thank you for joining the CS board video about iJEPA, image-based joint embedding predictive architecture, a new open source computer vision model for Meta AI, and the first AI model based on Jan Luke and Vision for a more human-like AI, which he presented last year in a 62 pages paper called A Path Towards Autonomous Machine Intelligence. In this video, we'll dive into the research paper that introduced iJEPA model, a computer vision model which is the first to follow this vision. No prior knowledge of Jan Luke and Vision is needed in order to follow along in this video. We'll explore what is more human-like in this model and dive deep into how it works. Let's start with an essential background about self-supervised learning in computer vision. So first, what is self-supervised learning? In short, it means our training data has no labels, and the model learns solely from the images, which helps to capture common sense knowledge from the data itself, which is important for learning in a more human-like method. There are two common approaches for self-supervised learning from images. One is invariance-based, where we train an encoder to receive an image's input, such as the cat image here, and produce a vector of numbers that represent the semantics of the image. These vectors are called embeddings or representations. The idea here is that during training we present the model similar images, such as the rotated cat ear, and we optimize the encoder so it will yield similar embeddings to both images, because they have similar semantic meaning. Embeddings of not compatible images are trained to be dissimilar. The different views of the image are usually created using handcrafted data augmentation techniques, such as geometric transformations, coloring and more. This approach proved to reach high semantic levels. However, it has biases, as shown in previous research, and is specific to images, meaning that if we want to train other types of data, it is not clear how to generalize this approach. Additionally, the data augmentation usually requires some level of prior knowledge. The second approach is generative. In this approach, we also want to have an encoder that can get an image and generate meaningful embeddings. And to train that encoder, during training, we mask or corrupt random parts of the input image, and then use another model to get the embedding the encoder returns in order to reconstruct the image. This approach can generalize well to other types of data. For example, large language models or LLMs are pre-trained to predict the next word or masked words. Additionally, less prior knowledge is needed since there is no requirement to provide in advance images that are similar to each other. However, this approach usually reaches lower semantic levels and underperforms comparing to the first approach. So we are now ready to talk about the self-supervised learning approach that iJEPA brings. We'll dive into their architecture in details in a minute, but first let's understand their goal and main idea. Their goal is to improve the semantic level of the representations but without using prior knowledge such as similar images created with data augmentation. Their main idea in order to achieve that is to predict missing information in abstract representation space. Let's break this down step by step. Predict missing information is different than what we saw in the generative approach, where the model is trained to reconstruct a noisy part. The meaning here is that given an input image like this cat image, they use part of the image as context, marked here with a green square and they use this context to predict the information in other parts of the image, like the ones marked with pink squares here. So, we covered what missing information means, but what does it mean to predict in abstract representation space? Let's look at target 2 for example. The model learns to predict that there is a cat leg in this block, but it doesn't learn to predict the pixels of that leg. In generative approach, a model would learn to predict the explicit pixels to describe the cat leg, but in iJEPA the model learns to predict embeddings that grasp the semantics of this cat leg. We'll see this in more details in a moment, but the idea is that the model is guessing that there is a leg here. This is more similar to how humans would guess missing parts of a picture, rather than predicting the pixels. And this is also less prone to errors due to insignificant details since the model is focused on higher level semantics and not on the pixels. Alright, we are now ready to explore how iJEPA is built with more details. iJEPA has three components, a context encoder, a target encoder, and a predictor. Each of them is a different visual transformer model. Let's start with talking about the targets. Given an input image like this image of a cat, 
we convert it into a sequence of non-overlapping patches. We then feed the sequence of patches to the target encoder to obtain patch level representations. We mark each representation with SY and the number of the patch. Each SYI is the representation of the corresponding patch created by the target encoder. Then, they sample blocks of patch level representations with possible overlapping to create target blocks to predict and later calculate the loss on. On the left, we see the corresponding patches on the image for reference, but remember that the targets are in the representation space, as we have on the right. So each target is obtained by masking the output of the target encoder. Before moving on, if you like this content then please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button to help this channel grow. Next, to create the context block, we take the input image, divided into non-overlapping patches, and we sample part of it as the context block. The sampled context block is significantly larger in size than the target blocks, and also sampled independently from the target block, so there can be a significant overlap between the context block and the target blocks. So to avoid trivial prediction, each overlapping patch is removed from the context block, so here out of the original sampled block we remove overlapping parts to remain with this smaller context block. Here is a picture from the paper showing different examples of context and target blocks, where we can see that the context is larger but then reduced after removing overlapping patches. We then feed the context block via the context encoder to get patch level representations for the context block, which we mark here with SX and the number of the patch. Now we want to use the predictor to predict our three target block representations. So, for each target block representation, we feed the predictor with SX, the output from the context encoder, and a mask token. The mask token includes learnable vector and positional embeddings that match the target block location. The predictor then predicts the representation of the target block. Finally, we get predictions of the target block representations from the predictor for each target block and calculate the loss by the average L2 distance between the predictions to the representations we got for the target blocks from the target encoder. The context encoder and the predictor learn from that loss, while the target encoder's parameters are updated using exponential moving average of the context encoder parameters. Finally, at the end of the training process, our trained context encoder is capable of generating highly semantic representations for input images, and the researchers showed that using these representations, they can achieve remarkable results in downstream tasks. I hope this video helped you to gain better understanding regarding how iJEPA works. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.